I just got a new paint palette from uh, Good Press Ceramics. I bought it on Etsy and I'm super excited. I've seen um, an artist on Instagram, I believe it's Amber Lane, um, use it in a lot of her videos. And so I'm super pumped to have it myself. And then I found a bunch of old watercolor paints. I'm gonna pick out some ones I think I'll like, put them in my new palette and then just do some swatching because I don't do that very often and it sounds kind of fun. Okay, um, I want kind of one of each color and then I want some neutrals. I don't know where all these came from. I don't know if I bought them all or if they were gifted to me. Um, but first, I'm just gonna do some quick organizing. Okay, so I've got a bunch of different ones. I'm gonna start with yellow because yellow is easy. I don't like to use lemon yellow, so I'm just gonna not do that guy. Um, I do think the medium yellow or the cadmium, I think I'm gonna go cadmium. I don't tend to use super bright colors, so we're gonna do that for my yellow. Um, then I think I'm going to use, well, I only got one purple. I don't actually, it's funny, I feel like a lot of paint palettes I have don't have purple in them, um, but it's handy to have it, so I'll keep that guy. I've got some greens. Um, I've got hookers, green, dark, I like that one. Sap green is also nice. Sometimes I do like having a dark, cooler green and a warm yellower green. Um, Viridian is just too teal. It's not great for mixing because it's got a little bit of green and blue in it. So I don't like to have tertiary colors. So I'm gonna put that guy away. Um, I have a lot of blues. Let's see if any of them are the same color. I've got two ultramarines, three ultramarines. So I can just pick the one that's most used to keep using. And then I've got a cobalt and a cerulean. I think I'm gonna go with cerulean. It's most different from ultra, ultra marine to keep my palette more interesting and put my cobalt away. I've got some reds. I've got brilliant red, alizarin crimson, cadmium, and crimson. Um, this cadmium red, it is even the. It's not quite as orange as this looks. It is more red, but it's still not quite a pure red. So that's going away. I think I'm gonna go with alizarin, just cause it's more standard, as close to like natural red as I can get. When it comes to oranges, let's see, raw sienna is more of a brown. Same with burnt sienna. Although honestly, I don't use plain orange all that often. I definitely don't need the flesh tint for my plain palette. So maybe I will use, I love the siennas. I might even use both sienna. We'll see how much I have room for in my palette here. I've got um, this Payne's gray and this Payne's gray. I really like a nice dark black because I can always make it lighter to make gray. So I'll stick with my ivory black. I've got some burnt umber and raw umber. I think my raw umber is the brown I really like if I'm remembering correctly. So I'm gonna use that guy. All right, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. Perfect. I have enough room, so I'm gonna go ahead and put these into my paint palette. Oh my goodness, I could not get my raw sienna open, but I did and it almost went everywhere, but it didn't. So that one's not nearly as pretty in my paint palette, but that's fine. Okay, so those are the colors that I used. I ended up adding my burnt umber because when I squeezed out the other ones, I didn't see my nice dark brown I typically like to work with. Um, that might be kind of hard to see the differences in the video. So once I actually swatch them, hopefully that'll be easier. I also used this nice grippy pad to kind of open some of the tubes because they were very stuck. Now I also ended up with this beautiful wood sketchbook by Arc Stone. I'll make sure to link them. And it has watercolor paper inside. So I am pumped to do some painting inside it. Um, it's fairly stiff since I just bought it. So it doesn't lay completely flat very easily. I've kind of been slowly stretching it. And then I'm gonna use a binder clip to keep all the pages on one side so that I can um, have fun doing some swatching and playing. Now, 
Um, I don't swatch colors all that often because I'm very not picky about my paints. So um, if you've ever done one of my videos before, I don't typically tell you like use this exact color or this exact brand because I just, as you can see, have whatever's on hand. And um, I know that a lot of you do as well and you don't need to buy something new to have fun painting. So uh, whatever you've got, have fun with it, play with it. Um, when we are gonna swatch, it's fun to kind of um, have fun with it. So thinking about a shape to repeat or lines to repeat. My go-to is circles. It's fun to play with circles all over. So I think I might do that today. Um, and that'll involve some drying so I can see some transparency. So I'm going to just take little bits of each of my colors. Um, I also tried to kind of have fun organizing it like logically, like the color wheel, um, but then I messed up and my purple ended up in the middle. So it's kind of logical, but not exactly. So that's okay. So I've gotten my brush fairly wet to get in some paint on it. And I'm just going to paint a few circles in each color. And as I go, maybe overlap some of them and see how they mix together, kind of getting to see how my paper acts, since this is a new book to me, getting to see um, the levels of transparency in my paints. I'm using a small kind of flat brush. Um, it's a two, but it's got this nice like flat tip to it so it can turn really easily. It's not fully pointed. Um, so I'm kind of playing with that, but I'm gonna go ahead and make some fun circles with my colors. So look how nice and orange this um, raw sienna is. There's a reason why I tend to use it over orange, especially since I work in mostly landscapes. There's not a ton of super bright orange, but this works really nicely as an orange, but it's more of a muted orange. So I really like using raw sienna as my orange. Sometimes I'll also then end up using this burnt sienna as kind of a red tone, um, since it's a very red orange um, brown color. So either one of these, this is more of a red orange versus that's more of a yellow orange. So they're kind of just different directions of those tertiary colors, having a little bit more of one of the primaries over the other. So more yellow orange, more red orange. So it's nice to see these and play with them to make sure I know what they look like before using them in a piece. But you can kind of tell, I mean, really by looking at the paints and when you pull them out before you put them on the paper, what they'll look like. Um, this is more just for fun, in my opinion. Brown is important. I really like this burnt umber. It's a really good neutral brown. As we were just talking about that raw and burnt sienna are much more warm tones. This is like an actual brown. It's very similar to the wood grain of the book that I'm um, creating in. So it's a very nice base for most natural brown things. And then I can alter it and make it warmer or cooler depending on the situation. And then this last one, I don't know if I, this is actually a color I really use all that often. I think I misremembered when I was um, picking it from my paint palette. Um, this is the raw umber. So I think I get burnt umber and raw umber mixed up. So it's much more of almost a green brown. So it's getting into those more cool tones, um, but it's still a fairly medium brown, but you'll see it's got this kind of odd tint to it that's different from the more natural brown. It's a little more yellower, greener, um, but not this yellow orange that is the other one. And then I like to have two different greens since one is a much more rich, cool blue green and one is that more ye yellow green. You've got instant kind of highlights and shadows when it comes to greenery. And since, as I've said, I like to do landscapes and there's a lot of greenery in them, especially in the summertime. So it's fun to just already have two colors. Typically I like to mix up my colors before painting. So I don't necessarily fill my palette with every single color I'm gonna use, but I create them as I go. Um, but for green, since I use so many greens, it's nice to have two different bases or places to start. Then here is my last one, my black. I chose my ivory black. It's a nice, dark, rich black. And, um, and I can always make it lighter by adding water to get my gray tones. So that's all the different circles. I think I'm gonna go back um, now that some are drying and do um, one more round and just do some overlapping to keep playing with um, the colors and seeing what they do when they are together. If 
For most of these, I've been picking analogous colors to mix and overlap, so colors that get along really well, like blue and green and red and purple. Here I picked, I picked opposites, so orange and blue are opposites, and by doing those, what should happen when they mix is they create brown, and um, depending on how much of each you put in. So if you kind of see where they overlap, does not make a pretty new color, it just makes this sort of kind of dirty brown looking color because opposites when opposites mix they neutralize so that's one way to make shadows in your art is to actually neutralize the color instead of making it darker sometimes you do need some black to make things darker i'm not against using black and watercolor um, but something that's kind of more natural is using those muted tones to make a shadow up here just by adding the opposite adding the complementary to it Or here, this kind of one, this proves my favorite hack is just to use brown. Since brown is what happens when you mix the complementary colors, if you just mix a color with brown, you neutralize it. So here my green instantly has this shadow where it mixed and overlapped with the brown. So it's a really easy way to create shadows when colors mix and overlap. All right, well there I've had some fun with some different circles and colors, kind of testing out some of my old paints. Um, I'm gonna dry it quick and just play with my pen on top because that's one of my favorite ways to end a painting. It's just some playful pen lines. I'm gonna grab one of my favorite uh, Micron pens. They come in all different kinds of shapes and sizes. This one's a zero one, so it's fairly small, which works on our nice small little sketchbook here. I like to pick a design or a line and repeat it so that it still feels cohesive um, but has a variety. So I'll do a spiral. I think I'll do some little dashes going different directions. This is also a great way to fill up any empty space that you feel like you didn't get to fill with your colors. Maybe some triangles. Don't do too many different designs or it can start to feel kind of crazy and chaotic, although you know it already is, but at least there's um, re repetition and that makes the repetition makes the shapes feel purposeful since they're repeating in a somewhat predictable way where you can expect to see it again in a different spot. All right, well, I'm going to sign and date this one because I'm bad at doing that to remember when I did things. So let's see what day is it? It is November 7th, 2023. And that is my first doodle and paint in my very exciting new wooden uh, notebook by Arkstone and this beautiful paint palette um, by Good Press Ceramics. So I'm very excited to play with this more. I can't wait to see what happens when I start mixing colors down here with the umbrella and everything. It's gonna look gorgeous. Um, so I'll link all these things. And my plan is to do some more little mini tutorials inside my sketchbook here. So stay tuned for what is next.